Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scare 4 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and covering how to build a defensive position for AT guns. I've released a couple tutorials uh, so far for AT guns, definitely more will be coming. So this is going to be a perfect tutorial to basically incorporate your my AT guns that you guys have built into your worlds a little bit better. Uh, when it comes to defensive positions, uh, AT guns were very very much so put into dug in positions or entrenchments to where they would be more effective they would have a little bit more protection and they would also um basically just be have more protection honestly uh and that's what the idea behind this tutorial is to show just kind of how to make a basic kind of protection layer around your at gun and as well as the added bonus we also have a kind of camouflage net on top which uh, was not used in all cases but it was used here and there it provides basically uh you know makes the gun camouflage from above, from the air so it could you know hide defensive positions so the enemy is a little bit more surprised by the uh, defensive positions that you do have when they realize that uh reconnaissance didn't spot everything so overall it's a really uh simple simplistic design but it's going to be really great in integrating into any worlds you have any kind of clashing sides dioramas and stuff this is going to be a perfect design for it. Just a quick little example here, we're on the world that has my trench line as you can see here. I did a tutorial on this uh, quite a while ago, but you know, you can still find the tutorial for it. Uh, but basically a trench line here, um, you can kind of see how it's incorporated in with the landscape. So you know, just have a little section of landscape kind of cleared out and you can easily dig a gun in and uh, have it kind of set up in position and it's you know kind of above my trenches and stuff so it has a nice uh view and uh, no obstructions to firing and uh you can also combine it with my dragon's teeth tutorial which you know in, in combination you start to see a really nice little defensive or little battlefield start to come into play here and this is only just you know a few little tutorials here not actually like 100 percent a scene so you can really start to see just how well you know these tutorials can mesh together and really start to create some kind of awesome unique scenes and of course doing battlefield details bob wire uh craters and stuff like that would really start to create the scene and make it come alive uh but this tutorial is going to focus in on how to build this little uh you know position here at gun position so let's go ahead and hop straight into uh the tutorial for it but real quickly i want to go ahead and give a special thanks to patreon supporter brick bros 2016 for making this video possible uh with his small donation on patreon every month he earns a vehicle uh basically a tutorial of his choice every uh month so feel free to check out my patreon page if you're interested in supporting the channel and also earning some cool benefits for being a patreon supporter again special thanks to brick bros 2016 and uh, it's also really nice of him because I know a lot of you guys are uh, looking for more AT gun positions and just defensive positions in general. So this is perfect for you guys and hopefully it works out really well. Anyways, let's hop into the tutorial by uh, going ahead and uh, building this thing. Alright guys, before we go ahead and dive straight into it, I want to go ahead and real quickly say that if you have not already built a AT gun yet, you may want to actually go ahead and build one. I have a couple tutorials currently out for how to build AT guns, so you can go ahead and look at those and build one yourself or use an air tutorial uh, or build your own, whatever you want to do. Uh, but to go ahead and build the position, it's really simple and it's a lot easier when we actually have the AT gun really built. It gives us a good idea on the size we have to work with, especially when you had clear out air space to actually fit the AT gun in before. Um, so just feel free to check that out and make sure and get your gun built so we can make it a little bit easier. Anyways, once you guys have your gun built, um, we can go ahead and get started. Now, it's very simple to do, honestly. Uh, what we want to focus in on is we want to go ahead and focus in on making sure that we have our front mount kind of built up a bit. Now this may vary with the height of your gun barrel here and there. Here and there, You can see with this gun barrel here, I have a uh, basically two block space between the ground. Uh, over here with this gun over here, I only have a one and a half block space. So you can see that there will be a little bit of differences in gun height and that's something you also need to take into account as well. So for this gun, we can build a bit of a higher mount than the other one. Uh, but just for example, we're going to go and use an assortment of coarse dirt, grass paths, some pot soil, uh, spruce wood slabs, dark oak wood slabs, spruce wood stairs, dark oak wood stairs, and we're just going to go ahead and end up just kind of creating a little bit of a mound design here. And this is something that you guys can obviously just go crazy with. Uh, you can do whatever you really want for this. 
uh, design for this gun. I feel like it's going to be best if we do like one and a half. I think that gives plenty of room for the gun to, you know, theoretically elevate and um, all that stuff. So, you know, of course, that actually will, you know, we won't actually be able to physically show, see that happen in Minecraft, but we can just kind of imagine and think about it and picture that that's actually happening there. Um, so this is just going to be a little bit of a kind of a mount here. You can see we have a nice kind of slope here in the front using the half slabs, which uh, kind of mimic dirt in a certain way. Uh, and we're just going to go and kind of take this, wrap this around the side here like so. And we're going to go and slowly fade this down in height to slabs. So we have something that kind of looks like so. Uh, we can go ahead and maybe add a slab in uh, here. Maybe replace this with a stair here. And we want to make sure that we kind of show that the main slope is up here in the front and then we can kind of see that it starts to slowly kind of damper off and slope off down the side here and you can really clearly kind of see that running down the side and we can go over here and do the same thing so again just kind of take some random sort of kind of dirt blocks very earthy kind of blocks as well and just kind of have them roll back like that and again we can just go ahead and take our slabs fill in these spaces here and again kind of just you know, fill in empty spaces on the back here. Again, don't be afraid to add some stairs into the mix as well. They uh, add really nice, you know, kind of, uh, you know, angles and stuff like that. And we also want to add some stairs and some slabs in the inside here as well. Uh, but we want to make sure that this side definitely in, in the inside is steeper than that on the outside. Um, so that's just going to kind of go around all the way like that. But over here, again, we can add some, a few slabs here and there just to kind of spruce up that side a little bit more. And you can see that you know we don't have both sides completely symmetrical you can see this side goes back a little bit more than this side and that's something that's completely okay it adds a nice little kind of texture and definitely looks looks nicer and you know is more eye-catching than something that's just completely symmetrical all the way around and you can see the randomized kind of detail definitely makes it pop as well one of the things we can also do is go ahead and throw in some dirt textures as well in the ground in the grass this is something very simple very simple and something i'm not going to do all the way around but looking over at this version here, you can see that I kind of did it around and kind of cleared out some grass paths and, you know, kind of made this area a little bit more trampled because you have the crew operating in this area and they're going to be trampling the grass and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So you can definitely have it, you know, a little bit more trampled in that area as well. And you can you start to see something kind of form up like this. Now, depending on how old you want this, uh, basically this tank gun position here to be, you can even throw in some grass. However, I wouldn't throw in grass if you're trying to go for a, you know, very new kind of battlefield. I would only throw in grass if this is like supposed to be a very dug in position that's been in, you know, basically been stationed here for uh, a very long time. So that it would actually make sense that grass has kind of grown over it and everything like that. Uh, but most for most of your tank gun positions, maybe you just put a little few grass blotches here and there for a little bit of extra little color and detail. But I would probably most likely just keep it completely all dirt uh, in most kind of these dug in defensive positions. So another addition you can make to these uh, positions to make them look a little bit more kind of permanent is you can go ahead and use logs. Uh, this is something that obviously again would be something I would do with a very prominent defensive line. Something that's been basically built for probably you know a couple months or something. And something that's looking to last quite a while. Uh, so this can be very simple by just going ahead and throwing logs in on the inside here section just to kind of add a little bit more uh you know of a built-in kind of feel to it and these logs you know they can be you know kind of randomly height as well but we kind of want them around them you know the general kind of vicinity in the inside here um so we're going to kind of just put them in that right there across the, the front there and this is kind of just to, just to act as more of a brace for the wood uh or the dirt that was kind of surrounding this uh tank gun position so it's something that's not necessary, but it's something that could look pretty cool uh, if done right. And you can see it just kind of adds a little bit more to the tank gun position. And again, this is something that you would probably expect in a more kind of prominent um, type of, uh, you know, situation where you're trying to actually set up a really strong defensive line or something, uh, maybe defending like a town or something that would need to have some pretty sturdy defenses. And that's something that can just be added in here just to kind of reinforce your line and the overall feel of the tank gun position. The next thing you can do to spice up your anti-tank gun positions is to go ahead and use uh, an assortment of leaves and some fence posts to make kind of a camouflage type netting. Now depending on what biome you're in or what you know kind of situation you're on, if you're in jungles you could use jungle uh, leaves or something like that or if you're using if you're in a forest you can use spruce wood. 
or sorry, spruce leaves or something like that. Just kind of paint on your surroundings and stuff like that. Um, I personally feel like that just like a kind of combination of jungle uh, leaves, oak leaves, and kind of spruce leaves creates a cool kind of splotch uh, type different texture camouflage pattern. But that's just personally me. And of course, you can uh, do whatever you want, make it one pure color if you're in a biome uh, specific area or something. But it's very simple to do the camouflage. We want to make sure that the camouflage is mainly focused in covering the majority of the gun. So the main kind of gun breach and section right here. So to do this, we can just go ahead and simply build a fence post up here from our mound of dirt. Uh, we want to make sure that it's, you know, about a block above the height of the gun. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go probably about an odd number of space across. So for this, we can go ahead and you can see we already have three spaces here till we get to the gun barrel. So we're going to go ahead and go over here, go three spaces over into our fourth block here and place down one right there as well. And a fence post that kind of goes up. Now, for me personally, I like to make this completely a square. You can go ahead and obviously not make it a square, make it like a little rectangle. You can go and go five back this way, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy what I did and do seven back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just like this, and this is gonna go up as well to the same height, like so, and we're gonna go ahead and go over here and do the same thing. So you'll start to see here that you get these fence posts set up here, and these are those supports here for the camouflage netting. And you can see that it's going to cover up the majority of the gun. It's not going to cover up the gun completely, uh, as I think it would, any more bigger than this would look kind of ridiculous. But uh, it does cover up the gun and hides the majority of it. Now, uh, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and make sure that the corners here are a little bit higher. So for the corners here, I'm just going to, you know, randomly assort the blocks. You can see I have the leaves here in uh, different slots in my uh, hotbar. And I'm just going to go ahead and alternate in between them and kind of create the corners here. Now, depending on the size of the, uh, you know, plan netting, you can make your corners a little bit larger if you want. Um, this one might actually work out having our corners just a tiny bit larger than uh, normal. So we can go ahead and just do this. <clears throat> and we start to get our corners that form up like this. Now, in between these corners, we can go ahead and have a row that kind of uh, drapes down a little bit like this to kind of show the natural kind of draping that you would see happen uh, with these nets. And uh, it looks like this side over here is actually one block shorter. <laughs> so I looks like I miscounted somewhere. Um, so I do apologize, but you get the basic general idea of what we're doing here. And same thing right here, like that. And I mean, again, this goes to show you, it doesn't need to be a perfect square as well. Um, I think that, you know, it actually kind of works out this size. And it's gonna go across like so. And of course, with any AT guns you guys are building, you may have to build this a little bit higher. You may have to build this a little bit lower. It just kind of depends on the situation. And of course, the size will change as well with that. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and kind of have a drape here in the middle. So it's just gonna kind of just go around like so. Uh, it's gonna kind of just be draped on and you want it to be draped to the point where it's basically touching the top of the gun. Uh, that means you're draping it enough and it's uh, going to look right. So again, make sure we're alternating between our leaves here um, and just continuing this on like so. And you kind of get something that looks like this. And over the middle section, we can just go ahead and raise the middle section up a little bit. And you don't have to do this, but I do recommend it adds a different, adds some more shape to the uh, camouflage kind of netting overall. Um, and it doesn't have to be symmetrical. You can kind of just do something kind of random like that. And on the inside here, you can kind of see what we got going on here. And it overall looks pretty nice. If you really want to as well, you can have like a little fence post up here in the middle that just kind of comes down like that. Um, or if you actually have space, you can have it come down and attach the gun or something like that. Uh, but once you have that done, you kind of get the netting complete. You can see the gun here, the position. It looks really fortified. It looks pretty cool. And you start to really start... You really start to get something that kind of gets, comes together with the build and really starts to come together as an AT gun position. All right, so one last uh, little thing I want to show you guys with this gun position is um, what you can kind of add to the scenery around it to really seal the deal and really kind of show a kind of living environment or kind of just show that there's environment, there's life to this position. Now, a lot of times you would have your AT gun crews obviously camped out or set up camp next to these guns obviously they need to be able to at a moment's notice be on the gun and ready to fire if needed so you can very simply set up like a little campsite type design right near the gun um, so this can be just simply setting up a little campfire 
um, like this and maybe putting some sleeping bags kind of on the ground here uh, around it. Uh, just obviously be mindful of your fire here uh, that obviously you do not want to uh, have your stuff catch on fire. As you can see, fire spread is on, so I'm just going to put that out. But you get the general idea for this and you can put little sleeping bags and stuff like that around the, the, the position. Another thing you can do is go ahead and maybe make a stack with some sandstone slabs here. Uh, these could represent shells, um, spent cartridges, something like that that are kind of on standby. And you could also put, you know, ammunition crates uh, nearby. You probably don't want the campfire this close uh, to ammunition and, uh, you know, ammunition crates and all that kind of stuff. But it's just an idea on what you guys can do and add to your positions and stuff like that just to kind of give it a little bit more life and all that and of course there's a ton more detail radio little radios and all there's also there's a lot of stuff you can do to really spice up this can't this uh gun position but the main focus is the gun position itself uh and i'll leave those small details obviously up to you guys but hopefully you guys were able to uh get a general idea on how to go ahead and set up a uh defensive gun position for at guns i think it's a very uh, nifty little uh setup and i think it will look absolutely great any kind of little mocks or dioramas that you guys may be building on your worlds. Anyways, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, setting up a position. And maybe I gave you guys some ideas on how to set up your own. Uh, and, other than that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, a special thanks to Brick Bros 2016 for uh, going ahead and making this video possible. And if you do use any of these designs in this uh, video, I do ask you guys to give me credit for it. This can be a thing from the silent build. Tweet to my channel where this video if this is appearing on social media sites. Just be sure you get proper credit for uh, this design. That's all I ask for when doing these struggles. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these videos. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're using it free to use it for whatever projects you guys are working on. Other than that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett24, and I'll see you guys next time.